Amen. 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 Prayer is the opportunity that God has given to you to say something about your life. And today we are talking about our warrior trainer, the Lord our warrior king. He said, the blessed be the Lord my God, who trains my hand for war and my finger for battle. Some scriptures are best enjoyed and they're to be, to be frank with you. If we are told all oh, that surrounds that scripture, we wouldn't want to quote it. You know what I'm saying? You just quote it and you jump up and down and you celebrate it. And uh, uh, if God sat you down before you opened that passage of scripture and said, look at what this scripture means, and after he explained that to you, you may not like to, I will say, God, let's go to another passage of the Bible. One of such uh, uh, scriptures uh, we have is the account in uh, John chapter 11, when the Lord Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the grave. Wouldn't you like to be the person that Jesus raised from the grave? In fact, the Bible said in uh, John chapter 12 from verse 9, he said there were people who were coming to see Jesus. They wanted also to see Lazarus because uh, uh, Lazarus was one he raised from the dead. And for that reason, the Jews also wanted to kill Lazarus because on his account, people were putting their faith in Christ. Who wouldn't want to be the instrument that God uses to make people put their faith in Christ? Uh, wouldn't you like to have that? Everyone wants to have, want to have that. Everyone wants to be the person that uh, when he preaches, when people see him, they put their faith in Christ. And uh, we celebrate that uh, a lot. If you go through that chapter 11, uh, from that, that verse uh, 43, when that thing happened, in part 43, he said, Lazarus come forth, Lazarus came forth, and he said, remove the cloth from him, they removed the cloth from him. And by him, some people went to the uh, uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, St. Andrew, and reported what had happened. They said, look what this man has done. And the people, they share, wow, this man did that kind of pain. Say so he raised the dead. Who wouldn't want to be the one that Jesus Christ raised? Who wouldn't want him to have his own house be where Jesus Christ raised the dead? And you move, move around the street. But something we often forget in all this is that Jesus and the Father was working on something to uh, make Lazarus and his sisters be the instrument for which people will put their trust in God. How did he do that? In spite of all the miracles they have seen before, Lazarus became sick. Something we don't want to come and uh, accept at times, some things we, we don't want to welcome as the truth of the matter. Lazarus became sick. And uh, we sickness goes with all kinds of prayers. We sickness goes with going to buy medicine. We sickness goes with uh, going to the hospital. Lazarus was sick. They tried everything they knew. They couldn't get him okay. So they sent a message to Jesus. And whoever traveled to go and tell Jesus would have, to their contest would have paid transport. He paid the transport to and paid transport and came back. And they said, did you see him? He said, we saw. what did he say? He said, I'm coming. Why did he come with you? What was he doing? He just sat down there. Just sat down there. Did he, did he tell him what very serious? He said he was very serious. And then they continued with all the struggle, give him water, give him injection, do this, bend his head, Holy Ghost fire, the blood of Jesus, Lazarus comfort, you are not dying. Eventually Lazarus died. And then when he died, all the heartbreak, all the tears, can you imagine Martha crying for this way, Mary crying for that way, people were holding them, oh, and people will say, look at that man, they say, I will, since you joined that church, this has not gotten better. Uh, I told you, this man is, 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 is a prank, he's a failure. He just look at the time he needed him most. He had opened the eyes of the blind. He had made the deaf see, uh, he, he had made the dumb speak. Now you need him badly. He, he, and, and you, you saw him, you saw him. He refused to come. And then the road that goes with organizing burial. People will go and bury, carry bury, people will travel and come. In Africa here, they cook a lot of food and the ceremony. And Jesus did not come until they feed the burial. 
and uh, in Draco, they wear their, their, their sackcloth, the mourning garment, and they put their brother in. And now it was the conclusion of everything had been done. People are just coming to say, sorry, take God. God have given, God have taken. It is God's will. If it's not God's will, the pastor just would have come. Just imagine Jesus walking to the place. And Martha in God means what? Martha said, listen, if you had come when we invited you, this man would have died. And then Joseph began to say some things. The pastor used to say, don't worry, you shall be well that uh, 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 this brother can live again. But as this is for the end time to come. Our brother is dead and buried. And now Jesus walked to the tomb and said, God, there Mary came up. Mary replied the same thing. Pastor, we called you, we called you. And the man said he saw you. And after talking to you, he said, don't worry, let's go to the tomb. What are you going to do there? Then when they got there, he began to cry again. Look at you, you're crying. This go good idea. If, if you had come over by then, you wouldn't have died. You wouldn't have died. And then Jesus Christ said, opened it, uh, removed the tongue, the stone blocking the, the tongue. They said, for what? Mary said, for what? Who said, for what? This man had been dead for four days. Uh, he said, just take it away, please. Just take it away. And then Jesus from a distance called. Lazarus, come out of that tomb. And I know people will be wondering if the guy has gone crazy, but to their surprise, Lazarus began to walk out. And Jesus Christ said, take away the grave clothes from him. And lo and behold, that was their brother standing there. Now, the thing we want to see is that after Lazarus had gone through this, and his sisters had gone through this situation, Anytime time they meet a dead person and they are praying, they are praying because they have in their very personal encounter, like what Pastor Kaz said in his message, said the best way to make your testimony strong, your preaching strong, is if you have experienced it yourself. What I call the gospel according to me. Anytime time Mary is praying over a circumstance, she will be praying because she has seen the power of it. And that is what we saw in that Psalm 144. He said, he traced my hand for war, my finger for battle. And I want to tell anybody where you are, you're listening to me now. Whatever circumstances you're going through, if God has not solved that problem, he does not make an answer of it. God wants to pass you through things that by the time he has solved this problem, you become an instrument in his hand. You become like that, that Lazarus. Bible says people, we are putting their faith in Christ. Why are they putting their faith in Christ? They say, are you the person that died? And yes, I was the one. What happened? I, I, I was the person. And look at what happened when I died. Look at how I came back. That testimony we win souls. But Lazarus went through all the pain. It's the pain that created the gain. It is the pain that made the testimony strong. And Bible says when people met Lazarus, it's testifying. There's no more controversy. No more argument. Because he went through it personally. And that place we quoted in 2 Corinthians 1 from 3 to 4. He said, at times God in his wisdom allows you to go through tribulation. To go through pain. So that when you have gone through pain, he does not need to come down from heaven to see matters anymore here on earth. Because like Sister Sumi in Malawi, after God has walked through you and brought glory to yourself through your life, when you are talking to people, you will tell the people, this is what I went through. This is the pain I saw. And look at how God turned all these things around and he brought himself glory. Somewhere in Isaiah that age, we saw another man, another testifier. His name was Hezekiah. He's the one we always refer to when he was sick. That uh, his pastor told him he was going to die. And the man turned to the wall and said, God, you can't let me die at this point. I don't have a child here. Look at my life. And God turned his life around and gave him 15 more years to live. And uh, when that man recovered, remember before that time, he had fought another war. We always give kind of testimonies without following the background of the story. The story went said the Caribbean attacked his people and they mocked him. They surrounded him and then an angel of the Lord went out and killed 185,000 soldiers in the Assyrian camp. 
That is where we could. We tell people how God can send an angel and kill one right 5,000 soldiers. And we claim it instantly. But the truth of the matter is that it didn't happen in the life of Hezekiah instantly. Do you hear me? Do you get the point? It didn't happen instantly. There was the training of the hand of Hezekiah for, for battle. There was the training of his finger for war. He prayed, he fasted. One time they brought him a letter. He sent a letter to Isaiah, his prophet. He said, are you not praying with me? What is happening? He said to Isaiah, just you and your God should sort these things out. Look at the way these people are insulting you and insulting the God we serve. He can't, can't, okay, if God does not want to save us, can't he do something for his own name's sake? They are insulting you, oh Lord. There are people who can hear my message today. That's the way they are crying. They are saying, God, they are insulting you. God, they are mocking you. God, this is my sickness. Is it glorifying you? God, this is my joblessness. How does it honor you? God, all the girls in my village who we are living as prostitutes, they are all married. I am the one that said I will live as a virgin. I'm not yet married. God, all the pastors in my community that used to go and do Yahoo, Yahoo, do the sick people, they, only, they all have cars and houses. God, I am the one. Ah, it's like I will not compromise my status. I am the one. I don't have a house in my hometown. I don't have where I live. I live from place. God, where are you? God, where are you? God, I am the one that said I will follow the due process in this office. I am the one that said I will not cheat in my exams. I am the one that said I will work hard. I am the one that will say I will not lie in my duty post. That I will render honest service. I am the police officer. Oh Lord, that I will not take bribe. I will not be put people in prison on, for innocent people in prison so I can get money. I am the one that said all this, oh Lord. But now look at my situation. I am the doctor. That said, I will not give a wrong medication. I will not make a patient to come and lie down before me when I don't know what to treat you with. Or I will not give fake medication prescription so you can get more money. But I'm the one that do is right. I have been fasting every Thursday, oh Lord. And my marriage and my children, look at where I am, oh Lord. What are you doing about me? Psalm 144 from 1 to 2. He said, blessed be the Lord, God, my Savior. The God who traced my hand for war and my finger for battle. He said, the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. My God whom I trust. He's training my hand for war. He's training my finger for battle. Child of God, everything you are going through shall be used by God to bring glory to yourself and then to reward you abundantly. When God finished with Hezekiah, in Isaiah 38, Bible says even Merodach Baladan came to see him. The king of Babylon came to greet him. Gentile nations came to see the man that God has shown himself powerful in his life. When he was healed, same thing. When his enemies were humiliated, they came to see the man in whose life God had glorified himself. And then as guy will tell them, well, what happened? How did it happen? I prayed to my God. My God answered me. You see that, that army that came against you? They dealt with us. So, right? We even consulted our own God. But he said, you see, that's why your God and my God are different. How does a kaya? We win many souls for God. Some of you pastors who are listening to me, I am telling you that God is preparing you for an explosive ministry. I believe that about myself. I am among those holding to the Lord. I am among those saying I will not compromise my standing. I will keep trusting the Lord. In this ministry, I run, people have put me under all kind of pressure. They come to me, they want me to prophesy false prophecy for them. They come to me, I, they, they want me to tell them something sweet so that they, that, that's when they will give me money. If I had to tell them the truth, they don't give me money. If I don't tell them the truth, they don't support my ministry anymore. You will see a man living, doing something wrong and you're talking to him and he, he refused to obey you. Then the next day he has gone to buy a car for a false prophet. And you know for where he's getting the money. You know the error in his life. You will see people that you are blessing their life. But Satan closes their heart against you. And you are crying. You're asking God. 
You go in the morning, you are doing your fasting, you are praying, you refuse to go and join native doctors, you refuse to go and join witch doctors, you refuse to go and join the false prophets, and every day people are mocking you. A pastor told me in a way, he said, hungry, we, hunger will kill you in this city, oh. in this way you are carrying Bible, you are fasting. Well, fortunately for him, he's the one that hunger has killed. Child of God, God is training your hand for war. He's training your finger for battle. God will use this thing for his glory. The way he's using the life of Lazarus, he will turn out the same thing for you. After you have gone through this thing, for somewhere in Job 23, from verse 10, he said, for he knows the fact I take. After he has tested me, I shall comfort as God. A God, God is a precious thing. But the beauty of God is not known until it is refined. Let me pray for you today. Father, I lift my hands before you, consigning all the partners of this ministry all over the world. All of them who are seeking your face, who are going through processes, who are going through challenges, who are fasted today, who are asked God, where are you? I lift my hand before you on the account. And I pray, King of Kings, every process you are passing them through, you are going to preserve them through it. And their testimony will be like a testimony of Lazarus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This situation will not destroy them. This situation will not kill them. They will not end up in shame. When Hezekiah will trust in you in prayer, the people mocked him. They said, upon what are you putting this confidence of yours? How, who will save you? The other people that you call, that, 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 that were attacked, are they not church people? Are they not, don't they have their own gods? Don't they, don't they pray Holy Ghost fire like you? Don't you see that you're losing out? Papa, some of the people who can hear me today, they have gone through this kind of humiliation and they are still going through it. The God who will not Hezekiah, Remember my people, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The God who are not Lazarus, remember my people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, by the power in the name of Jesus Christ, I address every oppressing power of darkness, oppressing any child of God under the authority of my voice. I command you now, in the name of Jesus, get out! In Jesus' name, Amen. I command every covering cast, I command every shoe, I command it holding you in the hand, in the neck, anywhere, every chain blocking your life and blocking your destiny by the power in the name of Jesus. I command them to scatter now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Scatter now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Scatter now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Scatter now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, yeah. I command everything holding down your destiny. Get out in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. The woman that speaks husband is harassing. By the power in Jesus' name, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit spouse co oppressing your life to get out of your life now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I disconnect you from this woman by the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. I decree you cannot come back into her life. I command fire of the Holy Ghost to torture you now. Fire to torture you now. Fire to torture you now. Pack everything you have and get out of this life. Pack everything you have and get out of this life. Pack everything you have and get out of this life. Pack everything you have and get out of this life. Pack everything you have and get out of this life. By the power in the name of Jesus, every demon, every sickness, every chain, every yoke, I command you by the power in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. I address you now by the power and authority in Jesus' name to bow and get out. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In the name Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, open your 
yourself up now according to the anointing power coming to your direction. Open yourself now. Open yourself up now. Open yourself up now. Open yourself up now. Begin to connect to the anointing power. Begin to move all through your body. By the power and the of driving to command now. Open up, open up, open up, open up. Release yourself. The anointing presence is all over you now. Release yourself now. The Lord our God is going to war for you in areas you cannot see. The areas you do not even know. Let the power of God begin to move right now. Angels of my God, move 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 now. Boshe keke makuro bo bo shanta la karaba ya tuto karaba bo soto lo ma karaba buche raba karama musoto lo ma karaba busoto karaba bo shanta leke raba busoto koma karaba ya karaba bo sento lo makadu bo shalama ka karuba ba karaba bo shenta le karaba bo sento karama mu sento lo makaraba bo shera ba bo soto continue to pray you know it's your brother in my angel was at pnonaja.org you can reach me by sending me on this whatsapp number plus 2348035724567 you can also send me message to Facebook or YouTube at a man shop of Emmanuel and like in us, J like in Jesus, Mosu N W O S U. Send me a message and let me have a message bless you. The next thing you can do is to share this message to all your contacts. Share the message to all your contacts and remain in the place of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.